out here, when it's rough weather, this is a really dangerous spot. We'll be coming alongside landing. We can have swells of 25 feet, 50 knots of wind. It can be scary. Every year around the world, a pilot will die. This might just be the world's most dangerous commute. One that Captain Zach Kellerman makes every day. To get to work, he has to jump from a swaying boat to a rope ladder and scale a massive container ship 15 stories high. We're climbing this rope ladder up the side of the ship or down, and we do it in all conditions. Kellerman is part of a small but scrappy unit called the San Francisco Bar Pilots, a group of master mariners who for the last two centuries have been climbing some of the world's largest cargo ships, then steering them in and out of the San Francisco Bay. They're called bar pilots for their ability to guide huge ships through shallow channels with sandbars on either side. We are the first line of defense for the bay. When these ships are coming in, we make sure we keep them safe. Kellerman's workday starts at Pier 9 in San Francisco, where he boards a small boat that will take him to the Port of Oakland. There, he'll climb onto a container ship and guide it out to the open sea. Both state and federal law require a local pilot to take over from the ship's captain, then steer the ship in and out of the bay, not just to protect the cargo, but the bay itself. When we first started back in 1850, during the gold rush, we were brought on to keep the ships safe from the environment. Now we're keeping the environment safe from the ships. Today, Kellerman is boarding a state-of-the-art cargo ship called George III, delivering anywhere from $150 to $300 million worth of goods to Hawaii. This tight spot right here is one of his biggest challenges. Very narrow, and it's only 50 feet deep. So we have a limited amount of space on each side and also below us. It's very difficult to become a pilot. 23 years ago, Ann McIntyre, now the group's business director, made waves as one of the first ever female pilots. She says typically candidates attend a four-year maritime academy and are required to have 15 years of experience before they can even apply. Then you sit for a written exam, a simulator exam, and an interview, and those folks that pass everything then have the opportunity to spend another 18 months to three years training. McIntyre says bar pilots serve as the human link in the supply chain, responsible for almost all containerized goods moving through Northern California. They went mostly unnoticed until the pandemic, when supply chain disruptions caused an epic traffic jam of ships around the bay. These guys were the ones to get it moving again pandemic was tough. It really took the supply chain disruption for people to understand um, how, how critical we are to, uh, to the economy. As we pull up next to the ship, we get one final instruction. No swimming. No swimming. That's right. It's a steep climb, no safety net or harness. Luckily, it's a beautiful day. But this is the Bay Area, after all, and conditions can deteriorate rapidly. More on that later. So here we are on the George Three. Once on board, just look around, and you get a sense of how mammoth this ship actually is. How much does a ship like this go for? Well, uh, this ship is $250 million. Ed Washburn, the senior vice president of fleet operations for the company that owns the ship, takes us to the beating heart of this vessel, a huge clean energy engine, about 200 times that of an average car. Ships built specifically for the Hawaiian trade, uh, so they need their goods right away, uh, or if we're late, the stores are empty. Hey, Liberty, uh, they're ready for you up on the bow. Which is why Kellerman wastes no time. With the help of two tugboats, he slowly pulls the 45,000 ton ship out of its spot and into the channel. Right now, we're starting to kind of uh, speed up a little bit. Speaking of which, 
Slow ahead. Slow ahead. His biggest concern, other than cross currents, boat traffic, and sandbars along the ocean floor, is a thick blanket of fog forming on the horizon, the kind San Francisco is famous for. That's a lot of fog. Yeah. Are you uh, going to be able to see through that fog, or does it get completely uh, white? We will probably be completely enveloped. minutes, the fog closes in. Looking forward, you can't see past the bow. Look back, and you can see and feel the tension on the team's faces. After 11 long miles of near zero visibility, the ship is safely out of the bay. Kellerman is not out of the woods. After handing control of the ship back to its rightful captain, Kellerman has to rush back to his pilot boat before conditions get too dangerous. But this time, he's in the open sea, and that rickety ladder is his only way down. Hey, we seriously got to go, you guys. Yeah, you the ship, go, 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 go. Okay. He still has to climb down that rickety ladder and back onto his pilot boat. But this time, he's in the open sea. It's a nail-biting moment that gets worse every year as the weather gets more extreme. As he's dangling from the side of the ship, the pilot boat gets into place so he can jump on. There is little room for error. One wrong move here could be catastrophic. Now, it's our turn. It's even scarier than it looks, putting your trust in a simple rope ladder, as it turns out, it's not for the faint of heart. Thankfully, it goes without a hitch. end of a long day, Kellerman heads back to the pier, having made it through yet another shift. Like accomplished, like I've done something, and uh, you know, we got to have a, have a little bit of an adventure along the way. Then again, some people are just more adventurous than others. Yeah, we'll do it again tomorrow. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs>